Hello, everyone, and thank you for this opportunity to present at this conference. This is very exciting. Uh, my name is Jessica LaBelle, and I am the Invasive Species Program Specialist for the Washington Invasive Species Council. I'm here to talk to you today about the spotted lanternfly, its biology, and the threat its establishment would pose to our way of life here in Washington, and our plans to prepare for it, notably the development of the Washington State Spotted Lanternfly Action Plan. Spotted lanternfly, or Lycorma delicatula, is an insect in the plant hopper family, and it has what are called piercing sucking mouth parts. And you can see that outlined on the right. It looks pretty impressive. Uh, they thankfully don't pierce or suck people. They are harmless to handle, but they are a massive threat to a variety of plants and feed on over 170 known species, with even more being added as they expand into new areas. So they're native to China, Bangladesh, and Vietnam, and have been introduced and are considered invasive in South Korea, Japan, and the United States. So they're not currently found in Washington state, but we are preparing for them, and I'll get into the how and why of that later. Um, also of note about these little guys is that they have a unique relationship with Tree of Heaven, which is a widespread invasive species itself and the tree in the background of this picture. Um, they're heavily drawn to it. Research has shown that spotted lanternflies that are exposed to Tree of Heaven during their life cycle are hardier and have better reproductive fitness. So they don't need Tree of Heaven in order to establish in an area but their relationship with it is so close that most managing agencies target Tree of Heaven and Spotted Lanternfly simultaneously. In Washington State, Tree of Heaven is classified as a Class C weed, meaning it's either widespread um, or of agricultural concern, or in this case, both. So the reason why Spotted Lanternfly is such an issue is because of how it feeds. It uses that piercing sucking mouth part to puncture the stem or the trunk of a plant, and it drinks the phloem or the sugary sap. This weakens the plant, um, but the spotted lanternfly also continually excretes as it feeds, and their excrement is a sugary, sticky substance called honeydew, and you can see that in the photo on the left. Honeydew promotes the growth of sooty mold, which you can see in the middle photo, and sooty mold decreases the plant's ability to photosynthesize, it attracts other insects, and it leaves the plant susceptible to more diseases, so the weakened plant often dies. In addition, they like to swarm feed, which you can see in the photo on the right, so it multiplies the problem pretty quickly. The initial detection of spotted lanternfly was in Pennsylvania in 2014, and it's now in some 15 states. You can see the spread here. So this all came from one introduction of a spotted lanternfly, uh, which is believed to have been in a shipment of stone coming from Asia. So in that previous image, we saw how quickly this insect spread to new areas in under 10 years. Uh, a habitat suitability study was conducted to pinpoint areas of the United States that would be particularly susceptible to spotted lanternfly, and you can see that image here. So red is highly suitable for spotted lanternfly and white is unsuitable. So that's a pretty large chunk of the country and includes many of our major cities and agricultural areas. So I have a list here on the right of just some of the plants that would be at risk of predation by spotted lanternfly, including grapes, hops, cherries and other stone fruit, pine and other conifers, hardwoods, and culturally significant ethnobotanicals. So that's quite a problem um, given the areas in this image. So that same study also focused on Washington State, and you can see that the densely populated I-5 corridor in western Washington and our agricultural breadbasket uh, in eastern Washington are both at risk. These numbers are from 2021, but show that Washington is a top producer of a variety of commodities that could be heavily impacted by spotted lanternfly. Uh, Washington produces over $2 billion in apples, $482 million in hops, 
476 million in cherries, 300 million in grapes, and 228 million in blueberries each year. Washington also produces over $3 billion annually in timber and accounts for 25% of U.S. log and lumber product exports and 9% of U.S. paper products. So also at risk are resources that we really can't put a dollar value on, like our environment, cultural resources, and the trees and plants in our urban and suburban landscapes. So the good news is that we are prepared. Uh, the Washington Invasive Species Council received a $90,000 grant from the United States Department of Agriculture, Animal and Plant Health Inspection Service, Plant Protection and Quarantine in 2022 uh, to prepare for the arrival of spotted lanternfly as best we can. And to do that, we formed the Spotted Lanternfly Preparedness Advisory Group to develop a state action plan. I'm proud to have been the facilitator of this group, and it's really unique because instead of just one agency, like the State Department of Agriculture writing the action plan, we had input from all the state and federal agencies that could be impacted by spotted lanternfly, a variety of industry representatives, and tribal nations. Uh, in addition to the state action plan, which I will talk more about shortly, we contracted to develop different support tools like GIS maps and forms, outreach materials, and held workshops to increase public and industry awareness. So you can find the Washington State Spotted Lantern Fly Action Plan by going to the Washington State Department of Agriculture website at agr.wa.gov and searching for Spotted Lantern Fly, or by going to the Washington Invasive Species Council website at invasivespecies.wa.gov. So I don't have time to cover all the different portions of the plan today, but there is one section that I would like to highlight, which is the inclusion of cultural impacts. And that's a topic that has unfortunately been overlooked in previous action plans for plant health emergencies. In previous pest responses, tribal nations and indigenous communities have been notified if there was eradication or rapid response work being conducted within a certain distance of reservation land. However, it's important to note that our indigenous peoples have interests that are not restricted to reservation lands. They might have culturally significant sites or traditional harvest areas for different plants and animals off the reservation. We consulted with the cultural resources staff at the Washington State Recreation and Conservation Office and obtained a list of tribal nations and indigenous communities to notify when conducting work in each county and included this in the state action plan. So this preserves the privacy of culturally sensitive locations while keeping the lines of communication open. We also wanted to identify which culturally important plants could be at risk to spotted lanternflies so we could target communications to tribal nations and indigenous communities. What we learned is that there are more species at risk than just first foods. There are a number of culturally significant ethnobotanicals, or plants that are important for traditional medicines, shelter, cooking, ceremonies, clothing, baskets, all different kinds of things, and it's really important to identify those. So this presented a challenge because if you learn about the history of the United States, including very recent history, uh, traditional knowledge keepers have very good reasons for not sharing information on what's important to them with the state or federal government. So to be sensitive to that, we conducted an extensive literature review to find species of culturally significant ethnobotanicals that are already known. So this is a list of the culturally significant ethnobotanicals that would be at risk if spotted lanternfly were to become established in Washington state and which is included in the state action plan. You'll see that some specific species are listed, but more often the genus uh, is listed. So remember that the spotted lanternfly has not yet made it to Washington. So this is not an exhaustive list, only a list of what they're currently known to feed on. That's it for me. Uh, this is my contact information. Please feel free to reach out to me with any questions you may have. Visit the Washington Invasive Species Council website at invasivespecies.wa.gov. And if you're in Washington State, please download our free reporting app for smartphones, Washington Invasives. Thank you.